Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Flytronics LED kit. My keys out here. What's up? So I know you and I and everybody's probably seen all those cool drones. Oh my gosh, the wind is gonna be terrible. Very sorry. We've all seen those cool drones that have the LEDs all over them and they're nicely wired. It doesn't look like a pile of like a mess. But then you try and put LEDs on your quad and you have a rat's nest of wires. It's super heavy. Uh, it requires an extra regulator and it's just a pain in the butt. And you're like, well, how do people do that? And there have been some other ways in the past. You know, we've had the Tiny Trainer LED kit that we've done in the past. And those are great for the tiny trainers. But if you want to put them on your five inch quad or your freestyle quad or whatever you want, the Tiny Trainer kit is arguably maybe a little small. It only takes up to 3S. It's just not the perfect situation when you're trying to put it on a full size quad. But today we're going to be reviewing the Flytronics LED kit, which is a new LED kit. And his LED kit is super, super good. It doesn't require eight or, um, LED arm LEDs. It uses just one PCB, but those LEDs are very, very cleverly faced up, down, and out. He calls them tri-directional. They have a built-in um, regulator and hub in the middle that also has LEDs shining outwards that takes up to 6S. So I'm gonna install it on this uh, light switch V2 that I've been practicing with here recently. Show you guys, do I need to extend the uh, standoffs? I probably will. And how I'm gonna go about mounting them and also just kind of talk about why this is so much easier than just doing your standard LED mess. Bit of a beat up light switch V2. I believe this is one of the test drones we were using to teach my sister how to solder funny enough but I've been flying it a little recently, practicing, and I think, for one, LED kits look super cool, so I'm gonna put LEDs on this. I'm gonna grab the LED kit. Here is the LED kit itself from the company Flytronics, and let's crack it open. So as you can see, there's not a lot of stuff because it is just so small. You have your nice silicon wire, looks like you have four dongles here for your four arm LEDs. Let me unwrap this. And that is everything. That is, here's your hub, which is super tiny, with four plugs, four side facing LEDs on each side. And look at that, two to six S input. So there's a regulator built in that can take up to six S. So you're not worried about killing your flight controller or its regulator, battery ground, and then just solder to your LED pad. And then check these puppies out. So look, that's a little LED diode, that's an LED di diode, those are facing out. These are side sideways facing, that's probably not correct, facing LEDs, so these shine up, and on the other side, these shine down. So if you put this on the side of your arm, you'll have the LED, four LEDs facing up, four down, and two outwards, which is genius. And I, I mean, I don't know what stopped people from doing this before, but this is so, so awesome, because I'll try and put some pictures on the screen, but the way you used to have to do it is you would have some kind of main board. Uh, hopefully it has a regulator on it. If it doesn't, you're just risking your flight controller regulator dying. And then you're running it for like a, an LED board on top of your arm. And then you have to somehow daisy chain those to the bottom of the arm. Or if you want to get even crazier, then you can run four wires or three wires from the main board and then another three wires. And then now you have six wires per arm. If one of those gets cut, now you're no longer legal. This is just 12 wires total no daisy chaining, only four PCB, five if you count the hub, regulates up to 6S. It's just easy and it's tiny and it's genius and I don't know what kind of magic, I mean, I don't know if it works yet, but we're gonna put it on my quad and I'm gonna show you just how easy and hopefully simple it is to work. To break these apart, it's, I guess you just crack it like that. Oh, that's kind of scary. And like that, there they go, they snap off. And before we put everything together, I'm just gonna to go to the scale over here, get you an idea of how much this entire kit weighs. We're just gonna cut the wire weight in half. Let's assume we use half of these. Wire, one point, all right, so 0.7 grams in wire. The whole thing weighs six grams minus 0.7. You're looking at like five grams for an entire LED kit. 
and wait to see how bright and how much light these actually put out. And for just five grams, I mean, there's going to be weight you're going to have to add and like tape and stuff, but that is super light. And again, if it works the way it's supposed to, this will be amazing. I'm going to take the top plate off this light switch V2. To make the stack a little bit lower, we're going to cut the flight controller gummies, which will then give us a little bit of extra wiggle room to get the stack lower without putting too much, because basically what would happen if you just continue to press on that gummy, the, the gummies aren't going to do what they do anymore. It's going to be completely solid because you're just slamming them. So, although we probably are going to be slamming things, we're going to cut this gummy with a pair of side cutters and that'll give us a little bit of extra room like you see how that's really there's a lot of extra room there we'll cut it down to uh, pretty flat and then that should be in here that looks pretty good to me do that to all of them gummies are cut way down it's gonna get our stack lower let's follow some bad practice why don't we Let's do that. So technically, you should always have a nut on your flight controller. But what if you were in a situation where you didn't have enough stack space to do that? Well, you would press your HD0 VTX on. Then you would get your Flytronics board. Let's see if we can make that work. Uh-oh. That's going to work. You may say, Evan. The, your stack's completely floating, and you're right. However, what we're gonna do, I think, Flytronics board on the top plate like so, and then maybe put a piece of double-sided tape here, or s put something here that will just com provide compression, because if it's being compressed, then it's not floating anymore, right? Um, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but I want a four high stack in a light switch V2 on 23 millimeter standoffs. Usually people only do three high and 23 millimeter. We're gonna be adventurous today, right? Wiring wise, the main board needs battery, ground, and then your LED pad. So I'm gonna have to grab the LED pad um, off the flight controller and then I can just run straight VBAT to this little board in the middle. Uh, unfortunately, it does only come with four little dongles. So you're gonna have to use some of your own wire. Uh, but again, it's just three wires and it should be pretty short anyways. And then it does come with these dongles here. So these will just plug in like so. I'm going to get the lengths to a pretty good guesstimate, but I'll be twisting them anyways, more than likely. And then your LED pad has a 5 volt, a signal, and a ground. So you'll do 5 volt and ground because this will regulate from VBAT down to 5 volt. So your red will go to 5 volt, your black will go to ground, and then yellow, your signal wire, is going to go to this one here in the back. So I'm going to tin these up, get my wires cut down, and uh, we should be able to throw everything on there. First, I'm going to go ahead and decide how long I need these wires to be. We're going to run the board like this so the LEDs are facing out the side. Got the LED side soldered up, and I will say one comment is the pads were definitely pretty small. They were staggered, which is nice, but. Um, just something to keep in mind is if soldering is not your forte, maybe call a friend because uh, these are pretty tough. But once they're soldered, then they can uh, be unplugged. Um, and as I said, they gave you extra wire for everything else, so you can use these to solder here. You'll solder a five or a VBAT ground and signal here, which would be red, black, yellow. But so far, so good. Going to tap in to the flight controller to grab those VBAT ground and LED and then we will try and fit this monstrosity inside the body without extending the standoffs or doing anything too wildly sketchy. Okay, got the main board soldered up. We're gonna go to our flight controller and find where to solder it. Unfortunately on the Foxier 20x20 FC it's on the bottom side so you will have to take your flight controller and solder to the bottom which is just a bit of a pain. But this will focus. We're gonna be going to the LED pad for signal and then you can either solder to the power leads of your ESC or, which I think I'm going to do, 
is solder to the battery plus and battery minus on the Fox Ear FC. That will be VBAT positive and VBAT ground. But again, you could solder to the ESC itself. But I'm gonna try and have everything on the flight controller for this one. I do wish that there was one more plug um, so that I could just unplug the LEDs. However, again, it's tiny, so I kind of like the form factor. Another thing I didn't mention is it does have a completely flat bottom, so you should just be able to, using that stuff, double-sided tape, to the top or bottom or side of anything. Super, super nice. Super, super nice. Okay, have everything soldered up, and it does indeed look like a wire, or a mess of wires at the moment, but I promise it'll go together fast. And they didn't believe in me, but with just a little bit of double-sided tape there on the top, and since the Flytronics board is completely flat, I was able to put it right up against the top plate, and then it just kind of uh, compresses down the rest of the stack, no problem, but getting um, lining up, no problem. Made sure to run the wires out each corner, and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna work great. So let me put the top plate screws on. Uh, I will show you how to set this up in Betaflight because there is a little bit of RGB setup, super easy, and we will go. All I did was put on some double-sided tape here on the LEDs. Each one got its own little thing of double-sided tape. And my plan is to put it on the, I guess, outside of each. It'll be there and there. If you put it on the front, then it could affect your camera, uh, especially when you're flying at night. But I would recommend at least for the back, or I mean the front arms, to put them on the back. And then just for symmetry, we'll do that there. I think this is going to look super nice. On there. As you can see, it came out super clean. There's a four on that side, four on that side, and then there's just the four arm PCBs. We're gonna have to plug it into Betaflight now, and we'll see if it works as expected. So, plug it into Betaflight. Usually, all you have to do, come in here, go to LED strip, turn that on, save and reboot. And that LED strip shows up here. Wire ordering mode. Highlight a bunch of things. Color, red, save. And then now we're gonna plug in the battery and see if it works. Truly my first time setting it up. Here we go. Well, that's not good. All right, I'm gonna have to take it apart and figure it out. Damn. Okay, so I've taken everything apart. Now I just have that LED board and one plugged in. Now, it works. So we're gonna slowly, through the process of elimination, figure out what is causing our problem. I'm plugging in one at a time, and there's probably a short in one of them that causes this problem. Well, they all work when you do them individually. So I think when it was all put together, that when it was squished together, it shorted. I'm gonna verify that in a second, but if that's the case, then I'm gonna put like another piece of double-sided tape or something to prevent there to be a short between HT0 and VTX and the Flytronics board, and that should fix this problem. But all the LEDs and the board seem to be working. There's no insulation, you press down, maybe. Whoa, now they're like full, look at that. There's like some kind of short when I, as I'm pressing. They get brighter, so maybe I fixed it. Well, there's something, something weird's going on here, and it's probably because it's touching the HD Zero board, so that is a, uh, definitely needs some insulation, so I'm gonna fix that. So, put a little bit of insulation between the Flytronics board and the flight controller, or the HD0 VTX and all as well. To finish this up, you just click on wire ordering mode, highlight everything, I'm gonna do red, save. Got a nice, pretty red quad, and as I said, look, you got LEDs facing upwards, sideways, and downwards. Super simple, super cheap, it's super, super cool. Um, I'm gonna look it up on the site right now. This LED kit is available at fly533.com. I'm gonna pull it up here, LEDs. And for $37, you get the entire kit. It's called the 533 5-inch WDRC kit. Get all the things that you just saw in the video there. Can't wait to see it on your builds and what you put it on. Again, it, the wires are long enough to where you can put it on a 5-inch. All the way up to big freestyle quad, maybe like a tiny trainer. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm excited to see what you guys do with it. But hope you guys enjoyed this review. 
saw how to set it up. And if you have any questions, put it in the comments below. Email me, message me, DM me, whatever you want. I'm happy to help out. But can't wait to see some cool LEDs on your quad soon. See ya.